control one day. Um, okay, but first I'm just going to give you a bit of information about Easter's. It's probably most of you have heard about. So at the moment there are expression and interest forms available at muzzonline.net, which link would have been included in the email that was sent to you about this week. So you can just go in there and fill out the form so we know whether or not you want to come. So team formation will be on the 5th of April and make sure you are there because you cannot be considered for a team if you're not. Um, and we're planning on road get across to Adelaide with the contingent. So I think that's all we need to tell you right now, but just keep that in mind that if you want to go to Easters. Um, Why should we go to Easters? Because Easters is awesome. <laughs> 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 you, 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 you. Yeah, well, take it from me. Generate a very 
clear and consistent <coughs> worldview, and the consistency of that worldview that's really helpful in using this sort of method acting technique of debating. And then lastly, the question that you're going to keep asking yourself for the next hour, hour and a half is, what are the issues in this debate? And that's how you generate arguments. That's a useful set of questions to get you started. It's not a complete set of questions, but it's a helpful set of questions in how to approach a debate. So, before we actually start talking about how you answer the questions for terrorism security debates, are there issues that you would like to speak about today? What parts of a terrorism debate, or what aspects or what issues in debates about terrorism security do you want to hear about? Media involvement. Media involvement. Okay. We can look at that. Perhaps slightly later. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> yeah? The idea of the actual danger versus the supposed danger? Great. Okay. So, yeah, actual versus, we'll call it fear. Anything else? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Privacy yeah. versus security. Yeah, privacy. Right. That's a big one. Do you have to speak to the due process? Okay, um, yeah, all right, we'll talk about due process amongst other things, that's always a good one, yeah. Might be to a copy for state-sponsored terrorism? No, we will talk about that, because I decided that was interesting, I'm going to talk about it. What about torture? Oh, torture! <laughs> And you use it to create fear. And 
you know, effective terrorism or efficient terrorism is where the fear is exponentially greater than the effort to create the violence, right? And September 11th was a great example of that. It was a very economical <coughs> attack in terms of all you needed was a dozen or so people hijacking a couple of planes and you've got, you know, an incredible reaction in terms of fear. So you've got violence, you've got fear, and then you've got the actual target of the violence. And you know, a lot of definitions talk about innocent targets. Um, that's probably problematic because um, the terrorists often don't consider the targets to be innocent in the strict sense, in that they are complicit as part of a system, be that you know a socio-religious ideology, be that uh, a state, uh, be that some group that the terrorists don't like, want to demonise, want to destroy. But what these targets tend to be is they tend to be soft targets, defenseless targets. They tend not to be, for example, military forces. When they are military forces, they're frequently military forces who aren't on combat footing or on active duty. You know, the assassination of off-duty military officers, the blowing up of the King David Hotel by the Stern Gang in early Zionist terrorism, just to take one example, they blew up the King David Hotel, the majority of casualties were civilians, but the target of the hotel, because it was the British military headquarters in the British mandate of Palestine, as it then was. So you've got violence, fear, soft targets, <coughs> and the last key ingredient is ideology. This is about furthering some ideology. Sometimes that ideology might be very clear, and there might be you know, a tangible link between <coughs> what the terrorists do or try to do, and how they want to achieve that end. Often political terrorism, especially nationalist terrorism, is like that. If you look at, for example, the IRA, if you look at ETA, who recently signed a ceasefire in the Basque territories in Spain and uh, France, if you look at any sort of nationalist terrorism, that's also very clear. Other times, the ideology might be a lot less apparent, or it might not be as straightforward. Al-Qaeda is a great example of that. We're still trying to figure out exactly what it is Al-Qaeda wants. The original rhetoric was a lot about the US being in Saudi Arabia, the two holy places of Islam, of course, being in Saudi Arabia, Mecca and Medina. That was sort of the original rhetoric. But over time, it seems to be that nothing less than complete utter destruction of the West uh, and the reinstatement of the caliphate seems to be what uh, Al Qaeda want, as the economist summed it up at one point. Incidentally, you should all be subscribed to the economist now, you're all debaters. <laughs> balance it out with a healthy dose of the Guardian Weekly or something, you know, suitably left wing so you get a balanced point of view. Um, other times, the ideology might be completely crazy. Like the Aum Shinriko quote, which was uh, Aum Shinriko cult in Japan, Japan in 1985. Yeah, I'll get there eventually. It's been a long day at the office. Um, and the sarin gas attacks on the Tokyo subway in 1995. They were essentially a millenarian cult. They thought the end of the world was coming and they had some sort of duty to destroy as part of that. Incidentally, if anyone knows more about anything that I am talking about, please shout out and say so. I have been known to be wrong. It happens two or three times a year, this might be one of those examples. Okay, so, where shall we go from here? Let's talk about what causes terrorism and how you solve it. That's probably a good framework for most of the rest of the discussion. What causes terrorism? Anger. Anger. Okay, that's a start. Yeah, you just shout out. This is in school. You don't have to put your hands up. Poverty. Poverty. Fanaticism. Anger. Being a minority. Being a minority. Prostitution. Unequal balance of power. Helplessness. Unequal balance of power. Yep. Perceived or real injustice. Perceived or real injustice. Okay. Um, what we're seeing there is a combination of sort of factors that you can measure empirically or statistically, like poverty, for example, um, and sort of ideological ingredients. Um, a lot of terrorism, you know, so the people who've been around for a long time blowing stuff up, as our friend articulated at the beginning of this uh, discussion, a lot of the time it 